Hello, I'm Alex from the DBT Vault team, and this is the first in a series of videos about using macros provided in DBT Vault. The first thing we need to create is a staging view. We call this the prime stage in DBT Vault, as we're preparing or priming the data ready for load into the raw vault. A prime stage is any view we create via the DBT Vault stage macro. A prime stage layer comes after the raw staging layer, which is our data that we have just landed in our database and haven't yet done anything with. There's lots of different things we can do to prepare the data in a prime stage layer, and in this video we'll look at the two main configurations we can include in a prime stage layer. Before we do that, we must provide the source model for the prime stage. This would be a dbt model or source. Here we will use a dbt model that I created earlier. This is a simple model that selects all the columns we need from the TPCH dataset in our example, just for demonstration purposes, and prepares the raw stage for ingestion by the prime stage. Let's create our staging view. In our models folder, I'm going to create a stage folder. This can be called anything you like, you don't even have to put it in a folder. This is just for organization purposes. I'm going to create a new model called vstageorders.sql and I'm going to configure it to be a view config materialized equals view. I will be using a YAML string metadata approach here because it's easier to read with the prime stage as we have a series of key value pairs. You can, however, provide the metadata in any way you want to the stage macro. It doesn't matter. This is just my personal preference. So let's start. Set YAML metadata. And now we write YAML. Our source model is going to be the raw orders model that I showed you earlier. And at this point, I'm going to end this here I'm going to copy and paste this now you can copy and paste this from the dbt vault documentation or you can type it out as you can see on screen all we're doing is we're extracting the variables from the metadata string using dbt vaults function from yaml which essentially converts the yaml string into a dictionary we can access using normal dictionary access syntax now at this point if i delete these we can run this and i'm going to just to show you what happens also going to put a plus in front so that we also run raw orders. Okay, so our view has been deployed in dbt. Now notice we provided the parameter include source columns equals true. This is the default, but it's really good to be explicit. Let's have a look at what we can see in Snowflake. Okay, so over in Snowflake we can see that we have our raw orders view. This can be a table if you like, it doesn't really matter, just for demonstration purposes this is a view. This is all the data that we are getting from the sample data set in Snowflake. If we have a look at the stage orders, our prime stage, you'll see that nothing has changed. It's identical in every single way to the raw orders view. Now that's because we haven't added any derived or hashed columns which are two of the key components of a stage view. So this does work, it's just it's not adding any value for us. Let's go back to dbt and make some changes to our staging model. Back in our staging model, let's add some derived columns now. So what we do is add a derived columns key and the three columns that we want to add in at this point. So we're gonna add a record source. This is one of the key 
uh, two audit columns for Data Vault 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this exclamation mark TPCH orders. Now what the exclamation mark does is there's a nice piece of syntactic sugar for DBT Vault which basically tells DBT Vault hey I really I'd like this column record source to just have the constant value TPCH dash orders please. Now let's add a load date. Now usually in your own data vault models this will be the date and time which your raw data was loaded into the, your current data platform. This date would usually be created as a column you'll have access to so it could just be my load date. Assuming that we have a load date column populated already in raw, raw orders. In this case we don't so I'm going to create a new column which is simply the order date plus 30 days. Now this is obviously not realistic this is just an example to show you the things we can do and what the load date column might have in it. So in this case we're simulating that the data was loaded 30 days after the order was made. Last but not least, we'll add an effective from column. And this will be really useful for our satellite later on. So this is simply going to be the order date. Now, we're not applying any transformations, as you can see. We're just essentially effectively uh, aliasing the order date as effective from. So all this is going to do in the SQL will be select order date as effective from. So that's it for derived columns. Next, we'll have a look at hashed columns. Before we do so though, let's rerun our staging model and see what it looks like in the database with these three additional derived columns now added. So first we must make sure that we're extracting the derived columns correctly. I'm just going to do some copy and pasting there. The derived columns in this YAML will be extracted into a dictionary and then we access that dictionary and we access the derived columns key. We make sure that the derived columns are provided to the stage macro explicitly here. So now that that's done, let's rerun and full refresh just to make sure everything's recreated and all the columns are added as we expect. Okay, so that's done, four seconds. In Snowflake, let's refresh and go into our vStage orders table to have a look at what the data now looks like. So all the same columns as before, so we're essentially directly copying the raw orders. So this time we should now have three additional columns on the end. Yep, we do. So I mentioned that the record source, we had that uh, exclamation mark to make sure it was a constant. As you can see, it's TPCH orders all the way down. And of course we have the load date which should be the order date plus 30 days and we have the effective from which is the order date itself and these three columns will be used later when we create our hubs links and satellites those will be in separate videos okay so back in our vstage orders model i'm going to start adding some hashed columns which uh, is one of the most powerful things that the DBT Vault stage macro can do. It allows us to have a standard hashing algorithm that we can apply to any column. It deals with concatenation, it deals with nulls, and you can read more about this in the documentation for DBT Vault. What we're going to do is we're going to add a customer PK column, which will be the primary key for at least one hub and a satellite which we're going to look at in a future video but what we want to do is hash the customer key column and that's as simple as that we just say we want the customer key column to be hashed and called customer pk so the the column that we want to create is the is the key and the column that we want to hash from is the value so that's customer pk we'll also need a order customer PK for a link that we're going to create in the future which will be a link between order and customer so almost as easy all we do is instead is add a list of 
keys that we want to hash. Now, DBT Vault won't order these for you. You need to make sure they're in the correct order consistently in all places that you define this key. Okay, so now that's done, we're going to add a hash diff for a satellite we're going to create in a future video. So to create a hash diff, it's pretty straightforward. The It's a mapping and the first key is going to be is hash diff and that's going to be true. And then we have a list of columns under a column key. And these are all the columns that we want to put into our hash diff. So the hash diff should have all the same columns as the payload for our satellite. So I'm going to list all of those out. We also additionally add the natural key, i.e. the key pre-hash. So in this case, the natural key for customer PK is customer key. So we want to add customer key and we'll add the effective from at the end as well. So I have the customer key, the customer name, and I'll just type all those in. And finally, the effective, oops, the effective from. Now the stage macro is pretty clever. We generated this effective from column here in the derive columns. Uh, so it doesn't technically exist yet, but the hash columns are aware of what the derived columns have done. So we can select a column from here that we've generated and use it in a hashed column, which is really handy. So we've got the effective from in there and we've got the customer key in there as well. So um, you could read more about this in the Data Vault book or on our, in the DBT Vault documentation, but essentially this allows the satellites to pick up new records accurately making sure that uniqueness is defined by the change in the payload and the key and effective from. And that's it for our hash columns. So let's load that again, making sure that we are providing the hashed columns correctly to the stage macro, like so, uh, like so, and then let's run that again. ready to see some magic. <laughs> okay, so that's finished reloading the stage. Let's go back into Snowflake and refresh and look at vStage orders. So when we scroll along, we'll, we'll expect three derived columns we created earlier and the additional hash columns. There you go, so record source, load date, affected from. We have our customer PK hash. We have our order custom PK hash and of course we have our hash diff. We'll also just make sure that we have an order PK ready for the hub that we'll eventually make for orders. There you go. That's now run and we'll just go back to Snowflake to make sure that that's been added correctly. You may be thinking, ah, he forgot to add the order PK. Yes, I did. That's why I'm adding it now. But as you can see, it was very quick to add and change that. And there it is. Thanks so much for watching. For more information, take a look at the DBT Vault documentation. Join myself and our community of users on Slack. Visit the Data Vault user group forums. And finally, find out about our available range of enterprise consulting and training services to get your project moving forward and delivering value fast.